So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about a couple terms we hear often in prostate cancer. I know that a lot of times when it comes to cancer, we automatically want to cure, and a lot of people don't understand the word remission, or if they do, maybe they don't understand the context of what we mean when we say remission in our conversations on this video channel. So I think that maybe comparing the differences between cure and remission, and then also we want to discuss the context of why people want to cure. I think a lot of times people rush to surgery, they want you know prostate cancer taken care of, they want it cured, they want out of the situation, when a lot of times it should be thought of as a chronic disease, where it's this um, situation that comes back and you just have to deal with it in a different way, in a different way, in a different way. And the good thing about that is you're grandfathered into um, new treatments as time goes on and there's all sorts of benefits in that context. So I think prostate cancer is, as much as it is a physical battle, it's a mental battle. And so I want to make sure that we're really presenting the right terms and the right context for the situation. I do agree with you, Alex, that there seems to be confusion about this. Uh, what is a remission? What is a cure? In the early years, but 10, 20 years ago, if you mentioned the word cure with prostate cancer, there were um, bona fide experts said there is no such thing as a cure because prostate cancer could recur 10, 15 years after the original treatment, whether it was surgery or radiation. So to say that you were cured would be an arrogant misstatement of reality. Now we have more experience. We know that people are cured. Uh, how do you define a cure? And then we'll come back to the uh, question of remission. A cure is someone who has been in remission for at least five years. And uh, it's interesting that cures in men that have had radiation therapy can usually be talked about in someone that has gone into a complete remission for five or more years. Cures after surgery, interestingly, can't really confidently be uh, established until you're 10 or 15 years out. Um, apparently, it's possible for surgery to leave behind smaller specks than what radiation can. They can later show up and, uh, and bust the bubble. So someone that was in a complete remission now has crossed over to a relapse, and clearly they weren't cured. What constitutes a cure is first achieving remission, and we'll define that in a second and then sustaining that remission for a period of time, at least five years after radiation and at least 10 years after surgery. And that's when you start talking about a cure. One last thing I'd like to say about cure is that in most cancers, the cure is the be all to end all. We're talking about lung cancers, pancreas cancers, uh, all the serious things that we hear about, colon cancers. These. Uh, Cancers, if they are not cured with the first attempt, whether it be surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and they come back, they're fatal. And that is why cure is um, talked about in such reverent terms. That's not true with prostate cancer. If someone had a good chance at a cure, but unfortunately their disease starts to reoccur, there's a, probably on average about a 50-50 chance that with another good old college try, you can go for another cure and get cured. So uh, that is uh, quite a bit different than other cancers. So the absence of a cure is not as devastating as it is with other cancers. To take that even further, the men that are um, in, uh, have been in a situation where they got two attempts at a cure and uh, the cancer even comes back after the second attempt, we can control those men with hormone treatment now for 10, 15 years or more. What we're playing for in this modern era when we shoot for cures is not prolonged life necessarily because most men will have long, great longevity, but prolonged quality of life, that is the ability to not be on hormone treatment for the rest of your life to uh, keep the disease in check. And if you can stay away from hormone therapy, your quality of life will be much better. So you talked about you know, the concept of cure rates. So how does the cure rate change based off the Gleason score or does that even correlate? So you can predict the likelihood of cure with the uh, typical staging process that uh, we outlined a color system at the PCRI of sky, teal, and azure. And there you can project the possibility, the percent likelihood that you will be cured uh, after five or 10 years uh, based on whether you were low, intermediate, or high risk uh, to start with. So that's uh, the usefulness of staging. Staging consists of Gleason scores and how high the PSA is, the percent core biopsies positive, and now, of course, with PSMA PET scans, whether there's any spread of the disease. And that uh, allows us to project a likelihood of cure. Uh, we can, we can uh, offer a percentage. Uh, 
if your average high-risk patient is looking at maybe about a two out of three chance for cure, a three out of four chance for cure. Your average intermediate risk patient with standard radiation treatment is looking at about a 85 to 90 percent chance of cure. Can you define what standard radiation treatment is for the audience? I, I just think of generic radiation as opposed to generic surgery. And I, the numbers are the same with surgery, honestly. So whether you're, someone is having surgery or radiation for intermediate risk, you're looking at about 85, 90 percent cure rates. That means that five, ten years later, the PSA will still be undetectable. Well, thank you for giving us the context of what the word cure means, but what does remission mean in the world of prostate? Well, let me first say that people who are later cured, five, ten years later, remain in remission, have to have achieved remission. In men with newly diagnosed intermediate or high-risk prostate cancer, that would be the teal or azure stages, according to the PCRI staging system, uh, the uh, remission uh, is essential for someone to ever be cured. People that don't go into remission are really looking at a, at a situation where they're not going to get cured. You have to first get into remission. In the prostate cancer world, remission means that your PSA is undetectable or less than 0.1 or less than 0.05, depending on the assay being used, and then it's sustained in that range. In men that have been taking hormone therapy, it means that after the hormone therapy wears off and their testosterone comes back, their PSA continues to remain low. In patients that were treated with surgery, their PSA should continue to be undetectable. Uh, if they've been previously treated with radiation, their PSA uh, should generally be less than 0.5. We allow a little bit more PSA in the background because uh, men that have had radiation still have their prostate, and when the testosterone comes back, uh, the prostate will throw off a little bit of PSA. We throw out the threshold of about 0.5 as being a reasonable threshold because if it goes above that, it doesn't necessarily mean that cancer is present. But now we have PSMA PET scans, we can look and see if there's anything going on. And that, of course, begs the question, should everyone just get PSMA PET scans to make sure that there's no cancer for the men that are in remission? And it seems uh, quite excessive to expose people to radiation, which accompanies these uh, scans, if their PSA is undetectable. It's so unlikely that they're going to find any uh, cancer with a PSMA PET scan, and therefore we're not advocating that they be done in men that have undetectable PSAs. So bottom line, remission in the prostate cancer world means that the uh, PSA has become undetectable, that it remains undetectable, and that it continues to be either undetectable after surgery or very low after radiation in men after their testosterone recovers once the hormone therapy is stopped. I appreciate you mentioning that because I think a lot of times when people think of PSA, they may think of it in one context and not the other. So they may think, oh, I have a rising PSA, I need to check if I have prostate cancer, or maybe there's something wrong with the prostate. I don't think they often realize how important PSA is after treatment in order to indicate whether or not the treatment was effective. And that is um, incredibly important. So. How often, compared to surgery, radiation, when people are going into these hopefully remissions, should they be checking their PSA? Thanks for pointing that out, Alex, because the PSA as a screening tool, you're talking about it ha PSA has different roles. It's sometimes used as a screening tool or frequently used as a screening tool. And it's useful but has its flaws. And there's, there's been a lot of controversy swirling about PSA as a screening tool. As a tool for monitoring uh, to make sure people are in complete remission, it's much more accurate. Uh, that's because a lot of the prostate uh, activity has been removed either through the surgery or radiation, and PSA is a more pure indicator of the presence or absence of cancer after treatment. So that's a different role, and a, and a role in which it shines as a, an amazingly accurate indicator. The policies that we've used for monitoring men after treatment is uh, to, to check their PSA levels every three months or so for a couple years, two years after treatment, after the surgery or radiation, and then every six months uh, for another three years. So that takes you out to about five years. And if at five years the PSA is still low and stable, then uh, we think about just checking it annually. So we hear the term durable remission. What does that define? It could mean a lot of different things, but I think it means in the context of men that have been on hormone therapy. Hormone therapy is so efficacious. Most men will d achieve undetectable PSAs, and as long as their testosterone is blocked, they will continue with a low PSA, which by our standards we're talking about is in complete remission. But the the durable means that you can allow the testosterone to come back and that uh, you won't 
uh, allow sleeping prostate cancer cells, dormant prostate cancer cells, to then uh, be revived and start making PSA when the testosterone recovers. Durable means that you've uh, stopped the hormone therapy, testosterone has recovered, and thankfully the PSA continues at a very low level in remission, undetectable if it's surgery, or less than 0.05 if it's previous radiation. We have so many men that are on hormone therapy and want to get to that stage where they can get off and their testosterone can come back. How often do you see success rates where people can get into durable remissions off being off of hormone therapy? All the time. It's uh, very dependent, and we've mostly been talking about the use of these tools for men that are newly diagnosed that have intermediate or high-risk prostate cancer, that be teal or azure prostate cancer. As we mentioned before, cure rates are 75 plus percent in, in, in Azure and 90 plus percent, 85, 90 percent plus um, in men with intermediate risk or teal. So we see it all the time. People get cured frequently in this modern era. Uh, of interest is even men who've had uh, metastatic disease. We mentioned that half the time if people relapse, now with new PSMA PET scans, they're able to find the relapses at a very early stage, say in a lymph node undergo salvage therapy with radiation and perhaps some more hormone therapy and get cured at that juncture as well. That means they go back into remission, a durable remission and that where their PSA remains low after all hormone treatment is stopped. So this um, is something that we're seeing uh, not uncommonly, even in men that have early spread of cancer, metastatic disease. So you have a man that walks into your office, he's had radiation, his PSA is undetectable for five years, now he's considered cure. What does your follow-up routine look like for him? So if their testosterone is recovered, that means that they've passed the acid test, the Darwinian challenge, and after five years, our typical policy is to check the PSA once a year. So we've been talking about standard treatments, surgery, radiation, whole gland radiation, but then we have focal therapy, which is becoming more and more popular with Tulsa Pro and all sorts of forms of radiation now. So that's gonna leave a lot more of the prostate unradiated and intact, so what would the PSA look like after that? I mean, that's a, it's a pretty big difference. Yes, thank you for making that point, because uh, when we tell patients that they might wanna consider focal therapy, uh, where they just treat the tumor area, not the whole prostate, that helps them get through this with less likelihood of impotence. Uh, we do warn them that they're, when they have an untreated prostate, they're going to be at risk for a new cancer someday in the untreated prostate. Prostate cancer is common. You can catch a new cancer in the untreated prostate. So we let them know that in addition to the PSA testing every three months for two years, every six months for three years, uh, and annually thereafter, uh, that they should also get an MRI of their prostate every year to look at the untreated section of the gland to make sure there aren't any new tumors surfacing over time. Uh, and we also tell them to be prepared for the fact that their PSA is not going to typically go down to less than 0 0.5 if, uh, if half the prostate's still there. So the PSA nadir, the low, the low level uh, that the PSA finally arrives at after treatment, will be higher in men that have had focal therapy. So besides the fact that it may not be covered in this situation, why would a man have an MRI versus a PSMA if PSMA is so powerful and we can see every prostate, you know, hopefully every antigen that's there? So we've been reserving the PSMAs for uh, situations where we feel that there is a problem and we've been using the MRIs in the patients where we don't think there's a problem. And the reason is that there's no radiation associated with the MRI. So the MRI can be done uh, very safely on an annual basis without you know, getting exposure to radiation. If the MRI sees something, if the PSA is running higher than we think it should based on how much prostate was left behind, we'll get a PSMA PET scan. Thank you so much for watching this video on cures and remissions. The reason we're bringing this up is we know it's an incredibly important topic to you. We all want you to have a remission. We want you to get that cure. It's very important to us and we wanna be here to help you. So go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week and hopefully this helps build your research and your education and gives you a really good context for your particular stage of prostate cancer. Please remember that your prostate cancer is completely unique to you and that you need to bring those specific aspects up with your medical team. Visit our website, pcri.org, if you would like more information, if you'd like to donate. We are a 501c3 who does these videos all around the world for people for free, so that's really great. And go ahead and contact our helpline if you need help. We do have patients who have been trained by our medical oncology team in order to answer your questions. We are here for you. We are so grateful that you trust us. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great week.